let's get down to it. Today we just saw first quarter GDP reading. Right. First we're going to get. We'll see it again. But it suggests at 2.5% that the economy isn't growing as fast as some people thought it might. Well, it's not and it won't. Why do you say that? Well, uh, uh, rather than focus on the numbers, I think the bigger issue is regulation. I, I think many businesses are asking, how can I do more with less? So, for example, there's, you look at P&G, it came out the other day, you look at a lot of these wonderful companies, Parker Hannafin, that I, in the spirit of full disclosure, I'm a major investor in, great company, top line growth is tepid, okay? Why? Because the economy, the, the numbers demonstrate and confirm that our economy is just sort of moving along. And, and I argue that if you give us a playing field that we can take risks and be successful at may, taking those risks, we'll do what we have to do in business. But with this new health care law, which I was a staunch uh, opponent, opponent of, of yeah. big time, it's like somebody that you watch them eating food they shouldn't eat and they can't lose weight. When they get on the scale, the truth be known. <laughs> okay, next January, when this law hits, and I, I don't know if there's any truth to it, but, but Politico yesterday said that the Congress, both houses both and both parties, were in cahoots with the White House to figure a way out where they and their staffs could be exempt from the exchanges. <laughs> And I, I certainly uh, I hope that's not the case, because if it is, the American people need to understand that this is how egregious this law is. They know it. They all know it. And now they're getting down to the moment of truth. It's coming. It's a train coming at us. So when you look at the economy right now, is it business, investment, and hiring that's holding us back because of what's going on in Washington? I'll give you for instance. We have a, an investment in a wonderful little textile company in North Carolina called Unify. Eight years ago, Unify had 7,000 employees. Today, Unify has 2,600 employees, and we're doing very well. We are bringing whatever jobs there are back to America. We have a facility in El Salvador. In that facility, it's a high labor content, but we can only go so far because the energy costs are five times higher in El Salvador than they are in America. So the more I can do here with less labor, the more compelling the argument for the energy hedge or saving on the and that's what's happening where where we can bring jobs so maybe we'll bring back 30 jobs or 40 jobs or 50 jobs and do away with 300 jobs in El Salvador but more importantly we'll save all that money on energy we everything should be working for America now like a charm we're becoming energy independent if if our governor who I'm a big fan of would just let fracking happen. Go look at what's happening in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. When you say, say our government, you mean in our New York governor, State? Our governor. Governor, I'm sorry. In New York State. I, and I'm saying this, Governor, if you're watching, I'm pleading with you, please, let fracking happen. And, and uh, there are environmentalists, very prominent environmentalists, who concur that this should happen, that there's no risk to the economy in fracking. You think about Buffalo, you think about Syracuse, right? You think if you can dramatically lower energy costs, they're, they're smart people, they have a great work ethic, things will happen. But here's regulation. And, and it isn't just regulation in terms of health care, it's everything we touch and everything we do in business. <laughs> and the more you burden business with legislation, the more you hit them with 18,000 pages of Dodd-Frank, Sarbanes-Oxley, this little textile company of ours, it cost us $150,000 a year to comply with Sarbanes-Oxley. And by the way, since it was enacted, not one case has been prosecuted under Sarbanes-Oxley. There were enough laws on the book before it to deal with the crooks and the bad people. Okay, so that's my take on where we are, and I think it's going to stay this way. Ken, how, how much, if, if we were to eliminate these regulatory burdens, um, these legislative obstacles, how much faster do you think the economy would be growing? I can't give you a dollar number, a, a number, mathematical number. What would, think, what would, companies, I think, what would I, companies be look, doing? Look, 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 let me tell you what I am. Every morning when I wake up, and every day, and I go to bed the same way. I'm an optimist. My wife says I'm Pollyanna. <laughs> I'm an optimist. I'm a risk taker. <clears throat> I love to see things happen, okay? I think all of us that are built like me would say, hey, you know what, let's go. 
All right, L let's take the half full cup and fill it up. Let's not take the half empty cup and, drain it. and worry about it going down. It's that simple. And, and, and look, we, we are blessed not only with natural resources, great, we're blessed with the greatest collection of entrepreneurs in the world, both in absolute numbers and as a percentage of the total of our population. We are an entrepreneurial society. <clears throat> so do, do you believe that the things that you talk about, that you believe are holding the, econ the, the economy back, are they changing your behavior? Have you done anything different as a result? Yeah, I'm looking at companies that have demonstrated the capacity to leverage expenses. Or I'm looking at companies that say, the pie isn't getting any bigger. How can I get a bigger piece of the So you're looking pie? for, you're looking for uh, why do I love Parker margins why versus am I looking, growth. Why do I love Parker Hannafin? Exciting products. They, they're developing new products that gives them brand new pieces of brand new markets. They demonstrated again and again and again their ability to manage costs. They're about one of the best at it. These are all things in a stagnant economy, and I, I, maybe stagnant is too strong, but these are all things in an economy where growth is tepid. Okay, I don't want to argue over words. Got it. Whatever you want to use the adjective, be use it. The point is, these are the kinds of my little textile company, Unify. We have another company called GeekNet that's an online e-commerce company. Again, where we can see the ability to grow within the confines of a not growing economy or we can do better, we can deliver better what we do at a lower cost, that all in earth to the benefit of the owners. Okay? Why do you think the administration doesn't get it? I think the administration, I'm sorry to say it, is anti-business. I, I think the administration, I, I don't know, I can't prove it. My, my opinion, my gut says, if you're a businessman, we don't like you. Okay, look at, look at how few- But they need jobs, they need to see the economic growth. But maybe there's a belief there, let government do it. And there is. Yeah. You know, this, this argument, big government versus small government, that's a valid conclusion of where we are. Let, trust me, we'll figure a way out. If we're a capitalist, and we are, we'll figure a way out to get the job done in a way that the, the, the customer is satisfied and we treat our shareholders right. Home Depot is another good example. You know, we have a simple belief. If we take care of our associates, they'll do a fabulous job with the customers. And that's exactly what's happening at Home Depot right now. We gave out $200 million in success sharing checks last year. Every store. The better we did, each of those people got a bonus. So it, capitalism works, okay? You want proof? Look at this. Look at Mike Bloomberg. It works. <laughs>